In this video, we're going to be revisiting the Xbox Series S in 2024. So the Xbox Series S was Microsoft's less expensive Xbox, and it came out four years ago along with the Xbox Series X in 2020. So now four years later, we're going to revisit the Xbox Series S and see how it holds up. And hopefully this video will be useful if you're looking to pick up an Xbox Series S. So as always, I've left timestamps below so you can skip to parts of the video that you want to watch. And if you do enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's really helpful. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Shameless plug out the way. Let's get on with having a look at this xbox so the xbox series s let's have a look at it here it is so i actually bought this back in 2021 i upgraded from an xbox one s and i was so impressed with this console that a year later i ended up upgrading to the xbox series x that i use as my main game console but here it is i still have it and i still think it is a really good console so we're going to start off by having a look at the form factor which is one of the features that makes the xbox series s most unique and as you can see this console is absolutely tiny i don't think this video is going to do it much justice but it is a very small console you gotta take my word for it so for a size comparison i've got a steam deck which is a portable handheld gaming console or gaming computer and here is the xbox series s as you can see they're actually and there's actually not a huge amount of difference in the size they're the same height the series s is a bit thicker but but take my word for it, this is much smaller than any other Xbox ever made. This console is like PlayStation 2 slim size. So if you are after a full size desktop game console that you can shove in a backpack and easily transport anywhere, then I'd definitely still consider getting the Xbox Series S. It's definitely the best one out there for that. And in terms of design, I think it is a very nice looking console. So initially Microsoft only released this console in white with a black fan. I think the black fan makes the console look really nice. But a year ago, Microsoft re-released the Xbox Series S as the carbon black edition which was a black console that came with a terabyte of storage so that was the kind of upgraded version of this in terms of connectivity it's got everything you'd expect it's got HDMI out um, it's got three USBs two on the back and one on the front and it's also got an Ethernet port so one way Microsoft saved money when building this console is they removed the disk drive so this is a digital only console so all the games you download for this console have to be done digitally. As far as I'm aware, there's no way of putting physical media on this console. But that was one of the trade-offs Microsoft made to uh, make the console smaller and cheaper. So we're next gonna have a talk about the price of the Xbox Series X. So unfortunately, if you buy this from the Microsoft website, it's not actually any cheaper than it was on day one. I believe these still go for about 250 pounds, but you are able to find these on the used market for a lot less. And even when I got that console three years ago, I think I only paid about 150 pounds on the used market. So on stores like eBay and Facebook Marketplace, Place. these are going for a lot less and I was just having to think so let's say you got that console brand new on sale for about 200 pounds that is a really good deal for a current gen game console so for that price I highly doubt you'd be able to build a gaming PC with similar performance and even at 200 pounds that's still 150 pounds cheaper than the cheapest Xbox Series X that I was able to find and this is a bit of an odd comparison but here we have the Steam Deck and I was thinking about making a video comparing the Steam Deck to the Series S if you want to see me make that video let me know in the comment section below I probably will end up doing it but it did make me think because this Steam Deck I've got the Steam Deck OLED here and this costs more than double the amount of that Series S so it's not really a fair comparison because compared to nearly every other current gen gaming console this is probably the best value. So we're next going to cover the performance of the Xbox Series S. So you probably already know this but the Xbox Series S has weaker specs than the Xbox Series X and that's one of the ways that Microsoft can bring the price down. So off the top of my head I believe the processor in the Xbox Series S is fairly similar to the Series X but it's the graphics chip in the Xbox Series S that lets it down. This is unlike PlayStation where the digital only PlayStation 5 had the exact same hardware specifications as the normal PlayStation 5 but at the end of the day we know that this is a less powerful console the real question is is the lack of power actually noticeable when you use the console and the answer is sort of so this console has performance in a lot of places that actually matter so when you use the Xbox Series S what you'll notice is things like the loading times are very similar to the Xbox Series X and this console isn't missing features such as quick resume it's able to do quick resume absolutely fine very similar to the Xbox Series X but where the lack of performance is noticeable is in graphics. So in 2024, most new games run at 1080p or lower on the Xbox Series S, whereas the same game would run at 1440p or higher on the Xbox Series X. So games do run at a lower resolution, and this may be something that you notice, or it may be something you don't notice. It all depends on the TV that you use. So if you use a really large TV, then a lower resolution will be more noticeable. And I'd probably say if you've got a big expensive TV, then probably worth getting an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5. But if you're someone that's gonna be playing on a smaller TV, or you're really not that fussed about resolution, then this reduction in resolution probably won't bother you. I have had it where 
where some of the newer games actually run at worse frame rates on the Xbox Series S. And this is one of the reasons I decided to upgrade to the Series X because I can deal with lower resolutions, but the lower frame rates that this console offers on some games was a bit of a deal breaker. An example of this was on the new remastered Dead Space. On the Xbox Series X, you're able to run this game at 60 FPS and it looks really smooth. Unfortunately, the Xbox Series S only runs this at 30 frames per second and there's no option within the game to increase that frame rate. And if you're used to playing games at 60 frames per second, these occasional games that only run at 30 frames per second on the Series S will be very noticeable. And in my opinion, that's a more noticeable limitation of the Xbox Series S's less powerful hardware. And in terms of the performance, I think initially back in 2020, there was less of a difference. We are noticing that certain games are being a bit held back by the Series S, and I presume this is only gonna get slightly worse. An example of that is Baldur's Gate 3. So if you're someone that's been paying attention to this game, then you will know that it was released on PlayStation before it came out on Xbox. And that's because the developers were struggling to get the game to run on the Xbox Series S. So they had to get an exemption from Microsoft to allow them to, to release a stripped down version of the game for the Xbox Series S, which is unfortunate. So if you buy Baldur's Gate and you play it on the Series S, it's missing a few features such as split screens, which is unfortunate, but it does show that there is limitations to the less powerful hardware. I think this is a very specific situation and I'm not too fussed about being able to play split screen Baldur's Gate on a console. Um, that's not something that really bothers me, but it has got me thinking that there probably are gonna be more situations where developers have to remove certain features from the Xbox Series S version of the game. So that is something to be aware of if you are thinking about picking up an Xbox Series S in 2024. The next thing we're gonna talk about is storage. So the Xbox Series S, well the white one, comes with 512 gigabytes of storage. Of that 500 gigabyte, only about 350 gigabyte is actually usable. So if you're planning on downloading loads of AAA games, then you're probably gonna run out of storage quite quickly. There are a few solutions to this. One, you can buy expandable storage. So there is a, there's a storage slot. I think if you wanted to add a terabyte using this card, then you'd be paying more than the Xbox itself. I believe an Xbox one terabyte storage card is something ridiculous, like 200 pounds. Um, so I probably would avoid that. The other thing you can do is buy a USB 3 hard drive, something like this. This is a SanDisk SSD that you can plug into this Xbox using USB 3. Something like this will set you back about 60 or 70 pounds. So it's a lot cheaper than the proprietary storage cards, but there are some limitations. So unfortunately you're unable to install current gen or Xbox Series X and S enhanced games onto this SSD. That has to be onto the inbuilt Xbox storage. But if you are someone that wants to play backwards compatible games such as Xbox One and Xbox 360 games, then you're able to install them onto this. So that will free up some storage on your actual console. If that's you, then I'll probably recommend getting a USB 3 hard drive. But honestly, if you're someone that just plays three or four games, and if you're okay deleting games when you need to install new games, then this should be absolutely fine. Um, it is a bit annoying that they didn't put more storage in it though. And finally, we're gonna talk about the games that you can get on Xbox. Because unfortunately, you're not gonna be playing physical media. You can't really talk about the Xbox Series S without talking about Game Pass, which you've probably all heard of, but it's Microsoft's subscription-based gaming service. It's a bit like Netflix, but for games. And in my opinion, Game Pass plus Xbox Series S is a perfect combination. One, because you can't actually put discs in this thing, so you have to download them off the Microsoft Store. And if you have Game Pass, you don't have to pay full price for games. You've got a whole library of games that's changing all the time that you can play on this. Because if you get an Xbox Series S for let's say 200 pounds and then you're paying like 15 pounds a month for Game Pass, then you will have a full current gen game console and a library of hundreds of games to play. So I just think that's a really good combination. In my experience, Game Pass has got a lot better. There are loads more titles on there. Like Game Pass has literally all the Microsoft first party games such as Flight Simulator, Halo, Forza, um, Gears of War. I believe it has Starfield as well. So there's just loads of games you can download and play and they'll run really well on the Xbox Series S. So that is something to remember if you are considering buying an Xbox Series S. So in conclusion, should you buy an Xbox Series S in 2024? And to be honest, there isn't one straightforward answer. It depends on your needs and what you're looking to buy. Let's say you're upgrading from a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One, and you're looking for a current gen console that will be able to play GTA 6 when it comes out, then I would definitely recommend an Xbox Series S. This is definitely an upgrade from last generation consoles such as a PS4 or Xbox One. You will notice the difference. This is much quicker and the graphics do look better than an Xbox One. So if you're someone that's upgrading from those consoles and you're worried that there won't be a noticeable difference, this console is definitely quicker and looks better graphically than an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. 
and at 200 pounds it is really good value. The other group of people that I would recommend buy an Xbox Series S are people that will take advantage of the portability. If you're someone that goes traveling and would like a console that you can easily fit in a bag and is much easier to kind of transport around places then the Xbox Series S would be good for you. And that's the other group of people that I'd recommend consider picking up one of these. So who would I not recommend buy one of these consoles? If you're someone that wants the best clarity in graphics, then I probably wouldn't recommend one of these. I would recommend saving up a little bit more for the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, or even waiting for the PlayStation 5 Pro. So that was a revisit of the Xbox Series S. If you have enjoyed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I'd love to hear your opinion of the Xbox Series S in 2024 down in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy, be sure to leave us a like and I will see everyone in my next video. See you next time.